if you looked into Aurora pricing, you'd find out it's really expensive if you aren't using it for high production applications. So if you're a hobbyist like me and you still want to use Aurora, uh, Aurora has Aurora serverless, which is just another mode that it runs in. And the advantage here is that it only runs when you need it to, and it can scale up and down uh, based on your application's needs. And so when you set serverless uh, in the database features, you're gonna now have this capacity setting. So you can set the minimum and maximum capacity for Aurora capacity units, also abbreviated as ACU. Uh, and so here it's between two and uh, 384 ACUs. Uh, and that's what it's going to charge you based on only when it's consumed. So when would you want to use Aurora Serverless? Well, it's really good for low volume blog sites, maybe a chat bot. Maybe you've built an MVP that you are demoing out to clients. So it's not used very often, but you plan on using Aurora down the road. So that's the use case for Aurora. It works with both MySQL and Postgres uh, for over a year. Postgres wasn't there, but now it is here. Um, there are some limitations on the versions of um, Postgres and MySQL, or MySQL you can use. Uh, it used to be only MySQL 5.6, but last time I checked, I saw 5.6 and 5.7 for MySQL. And for Postgres, I saw a lot of versions. So uh, there is a lot of flexibility there for you, but there are some limitations around that. And there's also other things that um, it, it can't do that Aurora can do, uh, but it's a big, long list. So I'm not going to list it here, but I just want you to know uh, the utility of Aurora serverless.